Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. Today on the Sign Lens, we're going to look at three very high end DSLR cameras. And one mirrorless camera. And one mirrorless. So two and one. I've got the uh, Nikon D5. We have the Canon 1DX Mark II and the Sony A9. These cameras are probably in the highest category price wise and really are action shooting cameras. These two are like tanks. The Canon and the Nikon are, they've got built in battery packs. They are made for autofocus. They are just heavy duty cameras. They're made to be taken out into the wilds. The Sony, not as much. It's not as much. Not that kind of category. But, so what are we gonna do with these today? Well, I mean, I think obviously, like you said, the, the thing that we wanna talk about the most is not only their features, but the way they handle, the way they feel, how fast they shoot, what it's like, but also just the things we normally test, like image quality, you know, resolution, dynamic range, ISO performance, focus tracking, things like that. We want you to be able to understand the difference between these cameras when it comes to dynamic range, ISO test, and the picture quality, especially those three things. So we have Alexis here to help us out today. Tell us how to find you. What's your social media? My social media is at Alexis Ayers. <laughs> there you go, with two S's. With two S's. With two S's. We'll spell it out on the bottom. Right we now. will, and there it is right there. You see it? Fabulous. All right, so moving on. Due to numerous complaints in the past. By not all just of you, one. Not, not just one. Numerous. Numerous complaints, complaints by all of you friendly and courteous YouTube viewers. <laughs> um, we're going to be testing, doing most of these tests with the same Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4 art lenses, which are super amazing. They're my favorite stills lenses. Uh, we couldn't get one in an e-mount because they're not shipping yet. It's, it's so it's close. Like we were so close. But um, the only time that really matters for the autofocus test. So we're yes. going to do the autofocus test using a Sony, um, the Zeiss 55mm 1.8, which is a great lens. Um, Very sharp but, lens. But I mean, all it's... of the other tests, we're going to use a Metabones adapter and mount one of the Sigmas on here. We want to give a huge shout out to Borrow Lenses for supplying all of our cameras and lenses today. They are a super great service that will ship rented gear straight to your door so you don't have to go out and find it yourself. Nice thing about these cameras are these are actually cameras that are rented a lot because if you need a second body or you're in a, a certain situation, you need an action camera you don't usually use, mm -hmm. Borrow Lens is a great place to get those and, and they rent these a lot. So let's get started here. Let's get our tests going and make it happen. All right, let's do it. None of these cameras are known for their resolution, but they are known for their weight, which is incredibly heavy. <laughs> Anyways, um, they're all about 20 megapixels. The Sony A9 is 24 megapixels, so it has a slight edge. We want to just kind of compare them, get a sense of the overall resolution and the image quality. We are using the same lenses on all of the cameras all now. All of them have the, uh, the art lens, 50 millimeter art lens. Due to numerous complaints by the courteous YouTube community. Yes. But in order to set this test up, went to single point autofocus on the eye, the leading eye that's looking towards the camera. So that we're getting that leading eye every time we shoot and it's in focus and we'll just compare those, see how they look compared to one another. And we shot various, I always shoot, Pull the focus way out of focus, shoot again, so that's having to find the focus every time. So one of those should look really good on each of them. We'll compare those and just see how they look for resolution-wise. Let's do it. So here are the images from the resolution test. Uh, you've got them up at full 100%, and then we got 200% on their eyes. Mm -hmm. And they are just they are so, so close. similar. So close. So close. Of course, the Nikon's slightly brighter. We're using all the same camera settings, and the Nikon's are always a little bit brighter. Always. Um, a little bit more sensitive to light. The Nikon's also a little more yellow. It is, definitely. And there's a little more of an orangish or more warmish tone to the, uh, the, the skin. To, well, to both the Canon and the, the uh, Sony, color-wise, which is surprising to me. So you mean the, the Sony's kind of matching the Canon yeah, a little bit? A little yeah, bit. I would have expected more neutral, a mm -hmm. more neutral look from the Sony, but they look so similar. Honestly, very similar. they could pass for the same camera probably. Focus wise, they're both very sharp. It gives you a really great resolution on both those cameras. I think all it's three a, of those cameras a total toss up in terms of resolution on all of them. Maybe uh, the Canon's a little bit better. It's so close. It's, I can't. Yeah, even. You can't I will tell. say that four megapixels on the Sony doesn't really stand out. No, the extra four no. doesn't, yeah. doesn't feel like. Oh wow! Look at that. An extra four, four megapixels. megapixels. All right, so it's time for us to do our dynamic range test. So we're set up in the alley here. 
we want really bright sunlight and really dark shadows, right? Yeah, yeah. If you're shooting in uncontrolled lighting situations, you want to see how can it, how does it handle the highlights? Is there a nice soft roll off or is it really harsh? Of course. Yep. We're going to overexpose by three stops so and one stop increments, one, two, and three. Now we'll do a normal exposure, then we'll underexpose by five stops. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, nine, minus five. And then we'll process all those in RAW, put them up, and just see how these cameras handle each of those as we go through them. This isn't really, I mean, I, nobody's ever going to be underexposing their images by four stops. If you know what you're doing, you're going to be properly exposed all the time. But it really yeah. is just kind of a way to see how the camera is seeing the highlights or the shadows at the extreme ends and what's happening. Looking at the dynamic range, all three of these look so incredibly similar. On their normal if, exposures. If you told me that this was, they were all shot on the same camera, I'd totally believe you. I would too. <laughs> I mean, look at this, the color. We did not correct the color or anything on these. This, these are straight raws taken out. And the only thing we've done is adjusted the exposures and the shadows and recovered highlights, but we did not mess with the color at all. Okay, moving to plus one. I feel like I can already see at plus one stops, the Canon is already shifting color a little bit mm -hmm. like on her right on her key side it go, it's going a little orange same thing with the nikon a bit the sony nikon looks kind of normal it is still holding a lot of detail holding on the, the brick, building on the left the, but the, the ground the other two are just super blown out already so the the uh, nikon especially that wall is gone granted that wall is like five stops over everything yeah else, so. it's we're talking <laughs> about a major range difference here Moving on to plus two stops. See how, look at the Nikon in the middle. Look yeah, at the, the highlights Nikon on her nose suffers. and that. You start to get this kind of posterization kind mm -hmm. of look. Mm -hmm. Just looks, I mean, it's We see that every looking. time with Nikon at plus two stops, it's mm -hmm. over. Game over for those yeah, guys. game over. Sony still, still handling not, pretty well. Not bad, yeah. but the, the uh, you look at the ground, the, the road, and right. the building's getting pretty blown yeah. out. But in the Nikon, it's like grayish. You can't, yeah. it's just, uh, yeah. The, the Canon, a uh, little more finesse than Nikon, but not great. Yeah. At plus three, plus I, three, I don't think any of these are going to, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's digital, plus three stops is too much to expect. Yeah. Okay, minus one stop. The, you know, honestly, if you're shooting digital, it seems to me like you should underexpose everything by a stop or two. It almost because feels Because this like looks it. really nice, and it's holding more detail in the brick, especially on the Canon. Yeah. You're benefiting a lot. The Sony looks fantastic. Sony's really got detail yeah. in the brick. Look at that. You see the nice brick, you see the mm -hmm. cement, or the uh, road that way there. I mean, it's really holding the mm -hmm. detail. Of Nikon's course. almost losing and, the most on these. And her skin tones are looking really nice in all mm -hmm. these. Minus two stops. I think this is like the sweet spot. If you're shooting this situation where you have that super bright background and the person in the foreground's in the shadow, shoot at minus, underexpose them by two stops and it's, you'll get great thing. results. It's a scary thing to do when you're shooting, man. <laughs> I know, right? Two stops. <laughs> minus three stops. Kind of the same. You're starting to see some of the noise on, you know, the shadows on her arms and stuff. Yeah. But those look pretty good, man. I mean, you're holding pretty so good. much detail. Look at the Sony over there. Look how rich the detail is. This is minus five. <laughs> minus five. The thing about it, too, is the color looks so similar to the Canon. It sure does. It really, I thought the Canon would have a major advantage here on that color, but... Absolutely. So minus five stops. I mean, it's getting noisy in the shadows. I probably wouldn't aim for this, but no, no, it holds it really far. well. A stop and a stop to a two stops is in this kind of lighting situation is a really good idea. Yeah, I would say minus two stops if you're if you got the person in the shadow and you got those highlights behind them. Minus two stops is a nice nice yeah. place to sit. So let's look at autofocus. Autofocus is a huge element for these cameras because you're using them in action situations. You need that autofocus to work. There's some real disparity between these cameras when it comes to autofocus. Yeah, I mean the A9, it's a mirrorless camera, so it can has it can use a lot more of the sensor. The Canon only has 61. 61. And then the Nikon has like 153. 153. So actually, a disparity really between all three with Canon coming out on the bottom. The A9, of course, has the eye focus, which mm -hmm. is amazing. Uh, we'll see how this Canon does. I don't know. Yeah, we'll I haven't used the 1DX Mark II before. So we're going to do our standard test for us. This is, the reason this test work for, works for me is because I feel like if I'm shooting a model or someone and they walk straight towards the camera, I'm trying to track them that whole time, 
that gives me a really good idea on how many frames do I miss in that process. You know, is it able to keep every frame as it goes? Or, and I want them to go from a full body into a tight face shot. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do that on each one of these and see how they fare. Well, this isn't exactly an action situation. No. May we could have her sprint, maybe. I guess you could do flips. <laughs> but if you're doing horse racing, it will be definitely a little tougher. Hopefully, this will give you an idea of kind of the percentage you're going to hit in terms of how many frames are focused on. Yeah, so let's get it done. So what did we just learn here? We've shot in frames per second. Well, the I set it to the mechanical shutter for the A9 for the first thing, and it is slow. It's, it's like actually slower than slow. I thought. It was like five, I think five frames per second. Sound like we a looked small it up. horse. Sound like a horse. In it. <laughs> Um, but of course, with the electronic shutter, it's wicked it's fast. It's night like light. It's like 20 frames. Uh, but the electronic shutter does have the the read the read issue. You know, if the rolling shutter there is a little bit of rolling shutter with the electronic. Yeah, if you're shutter. moving it like that, it's going to make things start to a little bit. A little bit. So if you're if you're planning to use mechanical shutter only, the Canon and the Nikon are actually twice as fast. Twice, twice as, as fast. fast. Twice they were as fast. very fast. I was amazed. But not as fast as as the electronic shutter. Right, not as fast. The electronic shutter sounded about as smooth as that buzz saw. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that buzz saw. There it goes again. Somebody shooting an A9 right over our shoulder. The Canon, the Canon camera suffered a bit on this one. It did. I expected a lot more. It does have face detect, and we had that all set up, and we did two runs. We should have done more, I think. We did two takes of this, and in the first take, it was good when she was further away, and then it got super out of focus when she was close and just kept it just missing. It fell apart up front. But then the second take, it was the opposite, where yeah. it was like really out of focus towards the end, and then it finally grabbed her in the middle, and it was pretty good towards the front. Uh, so that's the one we have here, is the, the one where it's more in focus on the front end. I, I don't know, it just didn't do that well for me. You know, you hate to say this one test determines how good right. the autofocus yeah. is on a camera. You know, who knows about what you, situation we're you in. You really should go out and try this for a whole day, you yeah. know, get a feel see for what it. It's like cuz I it's just not impressive. I mean, you were losing two or three frames out of every four, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. The Nikon did a lot better. Yeah, the Nikon it's but we're losing frames. It's okay. Not as good as the D850 that we've tested. No. several times. That one's really stellar. Yep. Boy, and when it misses it, it's out pretty good. But then it, yeah. it hits it really yeah, good. It. So it's like miss, 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 hit. Yeah. Miss, miss, hit. Exactly. Miss, hit, hit. Yeah. Um, seems like about half. When she gets really close, then it kind of grabs it and sticks with it. Um, well, she's slowing down too. If she walks too. into yeah. it, she starts to slow down, and I think it starts to be able to pick up. Compare that with the Sony. The Sony this is has the incredible. eye detect, and man, it works so so well. You're losing maybe one in six or eight. Yeah. You know, so the ratio is, is twice or three times what you're getting with the other two cameras. I mean, I think the these last like ten are all in focus. Yep. It's it did really, really well. I I'm gonna chalk it up to the like three times as many autofocus points. Four times well, yeah, as many autofocus yeah. points. Well, the eye detect. The, the eye detect well, is really... Well, I think it can do that because it can pick all these little in-between, you know, yeah. whereas the Nikon and the Canon are switching between two focus points that might not be in the right yeah, spot. Yeah, you're right. It's easier to move between them where mm -hmm. you're making big jumps on the Canon especially. Yeah, yeah. You know? And that might be why the Canon performed a little yeah. worse on this. You're making big jumps. So like, that's... Again, it's hard to make it... I, these are all really flagship cameras that cost a lot of money. It's hard to make it judgment call just from doing one test for 30 minutes. But in this one test for 30 minutes, <laughs> the A9 is certainly doing far better than the yeah. other two. So let's look at the ISO capabilities. We're going to start at 800 because 100, 200, 400, you, you really, they don't look that yeah, much different. That one the Canon is way out of focus on this one. I don't know what happened because it was confirming the focus the whole time I was shooting, but mm. Totally off on this. Even the Nikon is having some focus problems. It looks like it's focused back a little bit. But. The Nikon's having focus problems. When we go to uh, 1600, 1600, Nikon seems to have the edge. It does. Even though I, it's not just because of softness, even if you look at the sharper parts of the image, it is definitely a little bit cleaner than the other two that are looking kind of gritty. 
The Sony is not looking that fabulous to me. It's starting to give that kind of mm -hmm. video look. It looks like mm -hmm. you said, like bad makeup. I see bad it on makeup. both of those. I see it worse on the Sony. So 32 yeah. here. Yeah, you're starting to see just kind of the breakup. Yeah, you do see it. I mean, the the Canon isn't looking that great. The Nikon isn't looking that great. Or the, the Canon doesn't look that great. The Sony isn't looking amazing. The Nikon still holding in there. Still looking pretty good. Pretty good. Much softer looking, for sure. It's not as hard. Not softer well, as an out of focus. Also that. <laughs> no, just, but just the transition. The skin looks more clean. And yeah, you don't get that yeah. kind of grainy, it clumpy pick up look. The grain. Where's you getting the other two? So, so let's go to 64. Now I'm curious at 64. Tie between the Sony and the Canon. For last. Nikon, <laughs> Nikon's still looking a little better, but it's starting to get some chroma noise yeah. to my eye. I mean, these are a little bit, these cameras aren't the latest and greatest. They're not going to have the low light performance that we would, expect, like from, would expect. And from. they don't have the resolution yeah. either. You know, with 40 megapixels, you can, some of that noise is more, the noise is a little more invisible. Yeah, so you know, 12,800. Yeah, and they're all looking. They're all looking kind like of terrible. A, yeah, looks like a, a pixel painting. I, I feel like the Sony and the Canon were pretty neck and neck the whole mm -hmm. time, and then the Nikon had a little bit of an edge. You know, maybe a little under a stop more in terms of sensitivity. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I will say about these is they were all very consistent in terms of exposure and color mm -hmm. across the range. Didn't see this color. The they didn't color have wasn't the color shifting. shift or anything like it you see with some of the lower end Sonys or even the lower end. Uh, Canons, but overall they didn't perform as well as some of the the other cameras that we've reviewed from each no. line. But I would walk away with this feeling comfortable shooting the Canon, maybe up to sixteen, 16 at the most. Yeah. Thirty two hundred, almost thirty. To. Yeah, almost thirty two on the other two cameras. Maybe even sixty four on the Nikon. But this is this is I, the, I all of them. I feel like all of them should never go above above six forty person. <laughs> But you know, sometimes you have to, yeah. so. It's okay. much easier to get away with video than it is with still images. Very true, You know, That's so very true. Okay, so it was really important to shoot video on these three cameras because they all do have video capabilities. So we wanna do a test here where we shoot video and we test both the video, the 4K, but also the uh, focus tracking on each of these cameras because they both say they have that. The, the Canon coming out in a weird twist is the only one that does 60p in 4K. Which is surprising it's, to it's me. It's like the only Canon camera that does 60p in 4K. <laughs> there you go. Just kidding, the only DSLR. The only DSLR. But anyways, yeah, we want absolutely. to take a look at that and uh, see how it compares to the others. The Sony does have five axis stabilization, so we'll see how that, how that looks. Yeah, let's take a look at that footage and just see what we think. So all these cameras shoot 4K video. We shot some video footage on each one of them. Let's take a look at what that looks like. I mean, the, certainly the uh, Sony has the advantage of having uh, stabilization uh, mm -hmm. inside the camera, which is going to make a big difference. Yeah, so I shot, I, I, sh I got kind of the flattest profile I could get on each camera. None of these have a flat profile, so they're, none of them are going to hold the dynamic range very well. The Sony, the stabilization does help out a little bit, especially when I'm- Is that stabilized there? Mm -hmm. Wow, it's, it feels like stop motion almost. It's like jumpy. It is a little bit jittery. When I'm not walking, it does a pretty good job. It does, but when you were yeah. walking, that looked terrible. Yeah. It's trying to stabilize your feet mm -hmm. out of it, so mm -hmm. it's... Exactly. Yeah. The autofocus held pretty well. Yeah, this is this is all done on autofocus. It looks, mm -hmm. looks pretty good. It's not bad. And I come up to back to her face here, and it grabs it pretty much right away. Yeah, it does really well. Looking at the Canon, this does have cine style, which is a little bit flatter profile. It In is. fact, if you're gonna shoot video on a DSLR, cine style might be as flat as you ever wanna shoot. Um, it doesn't have stabilization, but it does have 60 frames, which is what we're watching right now. This is the 60 frames? 60 frames per second in 4K. Yeah. Kind of which a unicorn nice. for the Canon family. It is definitely a unicorn. <laughs> the unicorn you can pay to see for an extra $3,000. Um, I like, I like, the autofocus is doing amazing too on this. It has a dual pixel like their other um, you know, DSLRs and stays on her C200. face. As you go stays on her out. face really well. When I walk away, holds her really well. Mm -hmm. This has a little more rolling shutter than the Sony did. Sony has that really fast mm -hmm. stacked center layout, so it's so on a gimbal with this autofocus, this would work nicely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great It'd idea. Really if, nice. If you need a camera on a gimbal, but this is a pretty big camera on a gimbal. It's a very big camera and very yeah. tall. I don't know if you could balance. You can it. get away with the A9 without any problem. But uh, mm -hmm. if you're doing that, you're better off with a 
A7R3 or an A7 III on a gimbal? I think I think the Nikon loses out on this one because it well, doesn't have stabilization. The focus jumping all over the place. The focus jumps all over. I mean, you'd really just manual focuses. Yeah, you'd have to. Um, and it has pretty bad rolling shutter. And you know, no no really color options. It's just kind of punchy and contrasty no matter what you do. So the Nikon is definitely, I guess, use a video in a pinch, but I wouldn't use it with video in mind. Would I, would, never I would never buy it with video in mind. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it keeps hunting. It does. It has a square. It's supposed to be tracking your face, but even when the square is green, and it on will, her face, it, and on her face, it will jump and come back. <laughs> so. Yeah. So I gotta say, in terms of just sheer ergonomics, I like the Nikon the best. Um, because you can do everything with one hand. You can turn it on with one hand, you can adjust the ISOs right here, you hold that down. The shutter and aperture dials are both right here at your fingertips, the autofocus button, and you can change your autofocus points with this little joystick without doing anything else, just move the joystick. Um, and then of course you have all these other function buttons and stuff. You have so a you million can buttons on yeah. that camera you can program. It's really great. This one's not as good. I mean, you, you have a lot of things close here, but you don't have as many buttons that are able to change as easily here uh, by any means. It's, you have to reach down for the aperture, you have just different things. Yeah, you so. have that dial on the back that mm -hmm. you have to adjust with the, use to adjust the aperture and stuff. So it's not as convenient. Not. You're moving your hands off from it, you know, quite a bit. A9 is a whole different animal. It's so tiny, I would, I would like to have the battery grip on it just to make it easier to hold it <laughs> in my hand. I got no place for my little finger on this camera. I know. So I squeeze it up in I got, here. I got like a whole acre down here. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. But there are some nice things about it. The way you change the, the frames per second is nice. I will say it's this one is much more user friendly and just a lot more fast to adjust things than any of their other camera bodies. Because you have this dial on the left that has those two, yes. you can adjust the frame rates and the focus mode. Now I've got a nice, this is a nice pop out screen. That's true. You know, which neither of these cameras do. These cameras have no articulated screens. So it might be a blessing and a curse though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. That's probably true. So I think as far as ergonomics, I think the Nikon is very good. There's some shortcomings on each of these, really, all of them. But I think, you Th know. This is designed to be small. And I think that is a benefit in itself, even if it does have some of the shortcomings, like uh, the dials don't protrude as much or uh, everything's more compact. You have to kind of dig through more settings or buttons in order to adjust things. Yeah. So what did we learn? I, this, is, this was an interesting category for me because I've always loved the 1DX. Mm -hmm. And I think people make the decision to shoot the 1DX because it's a 4K Canon camera. Yeah. And yeah, it's like the only, get, it's the only 4K Canon camera that makes sense. It's the only crossover camera you can get. You can shoot stills and video on, and it's 4K. Mm -hmm. So I think Canon shooters are going to love full, that. full frame. And full I mean, frame. The 5D Mark yeah. IV does it, but it's cropped. So. Yeah. So, so I just think that's why a lot of people gravitate to it. There are other things, though. It's frames per second. You know, if you're doing Shoots bursts and fast. sports and that kind of thing, it's fabulous, which all of these fall into that category. So you're really yeah. talking about sports shooters. Or uh, nature shooters, nature wildlife shooters, shooters. Wildlife, yep. I mean, you can't um, be doing kick, 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 kick. I mean, you, you look at the Nat Geo guys, and it seems like they're all shooting the 1DXs or the D5s or those flagship lines because they're so robust. You can drop them in the swamp. You can run all day on the yeah. battery. You're not, um, yeah. But, uh, but for everybody else, I don't know that they're the best investment. I think the Nikon and the um, Canon both have inferior image quality compared to their cheaper options. Yeah, they've out they've outpaced themselves. Like yeah. the D eight fifty is is the D eight fifty is a better camera. Much better in camera most camera ways. All the way around. Yep. Um, the A nine still looks really good, but I feel like you can get A nine results with an A seven Mark three most of the time. Very very similar. Very similar. The A seven Mark three for two thousand dollars is a pretty mm -hmm. nice. Uh, you know, and it's got the silent shooting as well. You mm -hmm. know, if you're using it for mm -hmm. you know press events and things mm -hmm. like that, so. just not as fast. Not as fast. That's the only thing. Yeah, you're not getting there fast. Although it's not super slow either. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's really cool. <laughs> we shot on that thing, and it was like ripping off the frame. So, uh, my sense about this is that this is a category of cameras that really are a niche kind of market mm -hmm. for people who are really workhorse. You know, they're out there shooting a lot out in the outdoors or shooting events or mm -hmm. shooting sports and things. But a uh, line of cameras that will probably get upgraded here in the next few years. Yeah, they all you know? they all feel like they, besides the A9 maybe, they all feel like they need an upgrade. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, one, the 1DX Mark II makes a little more sense for Canon users for the reasons we stated above. Mm -hmm. But 
Yeah, there's no other option in that cannon yeah. line. But if you're a Nikon shooter and you, shoot, which you're not using Nikon cameras to do both very often. No, that's not your no, choice. Just photography. Just photography. You know why D850? Why uh, the, the D5? I I would say the D850. Although for if you're doing everything. sports, you want frames per second, you still stick yeah. with it. So really, they've kind of got you on the frames per second. That's what it comes down to. And battery life and and just you know you, strength of body. You could put a battery grip on the D850 though. They will yes. increase that. Same with the A9, which yeah. is, it would really be a great thing to do. Yeah. So, interesting line of cameras. People use them for a lot of things. And probably, I, we would love to hear your comments on why you love each of these cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, we've tried to be very fair in the way we look at these. We are not favoring any camera for any particular reason. No one pays us, you know, to sponsor a camera by any means. So what, give us, leave us some comments. We'd like to hear what you're saying. Tell us where we messed up in our, in our uh, review the, today. Our focus test. Yes, our focus test. Our out of focus ISO test. <laughs> Start there. <laughs> so uh, we just want to hear you, hear your comments. Make sure you follow us here on the Slam Lens. You know, we want you to follow us, like us, uh, all those things that you need to do to be a part of the Slam Lens. On Thursdays at three o'clock Pacific Standard Time, we're been, we've been going live for a while. And so uh, not every Thursday is when I'm available and I'm in town or not shooting. So catch up with us when we go live on Thursdays at 3 o'clock. So keep those cameras rolling. And keep on cooking. Hi, this is JP Morgan, and it's spring here in the Sun Lens. You know how I can tell it's spring in the Sun Lens? Because I have my bicycle shirt on. I like to put my bicycle shirt on when springtime comes because now it's time to get out and ride my bike. It is springtime and it also brings up another issue. We are allowing our audience to translate our videos into other languages, specifically Spanish. At the bottom of each one of our videos, there's three little dots. Click on that and it shows you a translation. Click on the translation and it takes you to where you can enter the language. Spanish is what we're concentrating on. Go to the Spanish and it shows you the closed caption. You don't have to sit there and translate each line, listen to me, and then try to write that down or translate it in, into the, uh, the lesson. No, you look at the closed caption, line by line, it's already written out, and you just simply translate it. We're asking our audience to come and join us and translate our videos so we can get them into uh, Spanish language. We want the Spanish speakers of the world to have the sign of lens at their fingertips. We'll see who's translating and who's becoming a top contributor here at the sign of lens. And we'll give you a shout out. We may even give you more than that. So get over and start translating. Help us to get the sign lens material into the Spanish language. I hope we're not missing something with these cameras. You know, like some guy's gonna leave a comment going, well, if you're a rhino guy, you're gonna need a 12 frames a second camera. <laughs> That's probably true. Yeah, you ever been charged by a rhino? Well, anyway, if we missed the boat in some way, let us know, especially you rhino guys.